Um, right, uh, good morning everyone and um, it's really good to be here at Intuit and thank you for taking time out of your day to come and uh, speak to me and uh, hear what I've got to say and I'm really looking forward to hearing from you uh, later on. So I'm going to keep my, my comments quite brief because actually what I'm most interested in is engaging with you guys and really listening to what you've got to say. But first of all, who I am. Um, so I am the small business minister, but I'm also responsible for corporate governance and consumers. And I was elected in 2015 as a member of parliament for Rochester and Strood. But before being elected, I'd run my own business for, the lo for 17 years prior to that. So I'd run a very small business, um, and, uh, but prior to that, I had uh, worked for some large, large companies. So when I was given this role, it was really good for me because I feel that I'm able, hopefully, to bring some experience and knowledge to some of the challenges and, uh, well, challenges and obviously wants that some of the small businesses require. So small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Um, 99% of all UK businesses are small businesses, so that's less than 250 employees, and they represent 5.7 million, uh, million workers. Sorry, 16.3 million workers. So it just shows you um, how big the small, micro and small business sector is for the UK economy. As Conservatives, and I became a Conservative, believe, a Conservative, believe it or not, in the mid-90s when I was leaving school and thinking about something that I wanted to do in the future and we were operating under a Labour government. For me, I just became a Conservative because I felt that um, it was a Conservative party that spoke to me and were giving me the right opportunities. They were the ones that were encouraging me to uh, go out there, have a go and try. So that's very much why I became a Conservative and decided to, to have a go and try and run my own business. And I was lucky because I had been brought up in a family and with a father who had been self-employed since the 70s. So he was the one that gave me some encouragement to, to go it alone. But believe me, I'd seen him in challenging situations. So when I was stepping into it, I knew that it wasn't going to be easy. But part of what we want to do as a Conservative Party is make sure that we do create the right environment for small businesses to succeed and thrive. We want to be able to give the opportunities for entrepreneurs to start and follow their ideas and dreams to turn them into a passion. But we also want them to grow and, really importantly, to scale up to the next level. Um, also, trying to really tackle some of the challenges that small businesses face and obviously we'll speak about some of those later. But if I could just touch on a couple. And one of the things that has been extremely, um, extreme, well, a big focus, not only for businesses, but for the business representative organisations and for government, is for us to be able to tackle late payments. In the last five years, the money owed to small businesses has halved, so we're doing better than ever. However, we are still living in a culture where there is still many organisations that are following bad practice and many small businesses are trying to deal with the pressures of having their invoices paid late or not at all. And that's something that I'm very much committed uh, to helping resolve whilst I'm in this position. So the things that we have already done, one of the new initiative is we've been able to make it legal for the, a legal requirement for large businesses now to report on their, on their payment, uh, on their payment practice. And so far we've got 13,000 of those large businesses who have reported already. We've strengthened the Prompt Payment Code, which some of you may or may not know about, but we strengthened that pay payment code so we are able to keep a track on some of these larger organisations who aren't necessarily paying their, paying their small businesses or, or suppliers in the right time frame. And I can tell you that in uh, the coming week, we are already kicking off another six people from the Prompt Payment Code, six businesses who have not adhered to um, their payment terms. Also, we uh, started in January 2018 the Small Business Commissioner. 
So the Small <coughs> Business Commissioner is working with us to help small businesses recover payments that are owed to them. And one of my particular focuses is how we went on the outcomes of what we're going to do around uh, l uh, late payments, is to try and strengthen the Small business, business Commissioner's role. So it make it more, make him more accessible to you as organisations and really um, promote him more so we can, so you as a community can actually benefit more from what's already there. And one of the things that has been very striking to me since we had the call for evidence, which was last year on late payments, is that many small businesses didn't realise the opportunities uh, to use a small commissioner was out there. They didn't necessarily know about some of the, some of the uh, systems that are there in regards to the prompt payment code and where there was potentially opportunities to gain access to information that would inform their decisions. So there's a lot to be done, and, and we're hoping in the, next, in the next few months to be able to come up with some real uh, stronger proposals and stronger methods to enable you to tackle that. One of the other things that we've, we, we've been focusing on, and particularly um, is very relevant to you, as you will be all customers of QuickBooks uh, Inuit. Obviously, uh, Inuit have worked with the Treasury in regards to formulating their package for making tax digital. And that's one of the things that government has decided to do, really to make it easier for small businesses and individuals to keep on top of their tax <laughs> and the way they manage their, their accounts. Now, I know that some of you uh, will think that uh, it's been a challenge, maybe, to try and get ready, but that's why we work with organisations like Inuit to try and get the software ready for people to, to hit the ground running. And I have to confess, on Friday I was actually in the building and I had the pleasure of uh, being able to listen to some phone calls from QuickBook customers in regards to how they were getting on with the new software and dealing with making tax digital. Another key thing for us is productivity. I've heard, ever since I've been elected, people keep talking about productivity, productivity with businesses. And actually, I, I think productivity, I'm probably saying something I shouldn't, but I'll say it. I don't like the word productivity, actually, because uh, productivity means many things to many different people, but actually, it is a very crude measure. But one of the things that we've done is we've carried out a productivity review to see where and what the challenges are to that, making, making businesses more produ productive. And what we found out is that actually it's not just small businesses that are less productive. There are some very large companies that aren't so productive as well. And also you're comparing all sorts of different industries. But there has been a few themes, and that's one of the reasons why we made the announcement for the £56 million budget in regards to uh, initiatives to help small businesses and larger businesses to be able to become more productive. And some of the themes that we may talk about later, but just to give you an example, so we decided to put £11 million towards small business leadership. One of the key things that we've seen is that actually when small businesses are able to, to improve their skills and their knowledge around leadership, it's always very difficult. You start out in a small way and then all of a sudden you want to grow and actually sometimes there are different skill sets. Sometimes you do need a bit of support. Sometimes you may never have carried out a formal qualification so you're learning on the job. So actually we recognise whilst those business leaders won't be bad business leaders, they will need that support and being enabled to be able to take their businesses sometimes to the next step. Also, another £20 million in regards to local networks. One of the key things that we found, and I'm sure you'll be able to give me some comments later on this, so the £20 million for local networks is really about strengthening local networks, so enabling people to speak with peers, rather than having government telling you what you need to do or, or necessarily giving you direct advice. We found that some of the best advice is when you are speaking to like-minded people or people who are, all, who are facing the same challenges as you, uh, same challenges as you, and you're able to learn from that. So we recognise that as a key area to improving the productivity of, of small businesses. Also, we inv we're investing another £25 million into knowledge transfer partnerships. Um, and that will be predominantly around uh, sharing best practice, mentoring and working with individuals to help small businesses grow. I just want to touch on a little bit about what we're already doing, which is our bread and butter, business support. And some of you may or may not have had 
um, some interaction with that. So I'll be really interested to hear what you've got to say. But we currently have 38 growth hubs ar across <coughs> the UK. And that is supported by government by 12 million a year. So 12 million a year um, from the Bayes budget goes directly to growth hubs. But there's also some other funding of growth, hub growth hubs. So currently, um, they, the, the current growth hub network has helped over 375,000 uh, small businesses and 26,000 entrepreneurs wanting to start up. We also have the, um, uh, the business support hotline, and I don't know if any of you use that, but that is predominantly used by people who are thinking about starting a business or running very small businesses or maybe be self-employed to try and get some practical advice on the phone. And if they are unable to get practical advice on the phone, they're then signposted to where they need to go. We're also running the Scale Up Task Force which is another important part. So that's really trying to work with those businesses we feel that are able to, who have got the expertise and knowledge and need a bit of support in regards to scaling up their business and taking it to the next, next stage. But also there are key things, so access to finance, what we're doing with um, our startup loans and the British Business Bank. So many people don't recognise that we have the British Business Bank, which is supported by government with large amounts of money where we are delivering the startup loans, we're delivering growth loans and scale up. But that's not just normal traditional debt finance. For once, for, for the first time in a long time, we've got all those different financial opportunities in one place. So now, um, when I started out, there was no other option other than to go to the high street bank to get finance. Now there are lots more opportunities and I'll be interested to hear if any of you have had particularly good examples or bad examples when you've been able to or looking for access to finance. But just to finish up, I recognise and this government recognises and especially the Conservative Party that micro and small businesses really are the lifeblood of this country. They contribute so much to the communities in which they operate and one of the things that I'm always very proud of, we all talk about good practice with big business and culture, but actually it's the micro and small businesses that are actually doing all the things that we're asking the large businesses to do already without necessarily recognising that. They care about the communities in which they operate, they employ local people or people that they have relationships with, and they care about how their employees perform and how they, they, that, that they live. So we recognise that. We want to help um, and support you to do that. We, I recognise there's loads of challenges. But as a government and as a party, all we can do is really try to hopefully understand what the issues are properly and try our best to make sure that we are tackling them in the best way we can, but also being able to do it in a deliverable way. So I want to thank you for what you do. Um, throughout the country, or I'm not too sure your geographical locations where you've come from today, but I recognise um, what, what you do. Thank you for that. And I hope that whilst I have this role as a small business minister, but with my longer commitment to the Conservative Party and the values um, that I hold and that my colleagues hold, that we'll be able to continue working to really show to you that we are the party of business, even though sometimes it might not think that. But at the forefront of our mind, all of us, whenever we are talking about our economy and how we want to improve the UK, is not just around um, how we can get small businesses to, to grow, but it's about how we could get small businesses to thrive in their chosen environments, wherever they are in the part of the country. So um, I'm really looking forward to listening to your questions and answers. And uh, you can ask me whatever you want. So I'm really happy and excited to be able to answer some of your questions. But thank you for coming here today. And, and hopefully you'll take this opportunity to, um, to uh, engage with me as best as you can. Thank you.